Have you ever had an interview where you look back and it just makes your stomach curl and you only think about it at like 2 a.m. when you can't sleep because it was so horrible and it just burns in your brain because it was that bad? That's pretty much how my first ever tech sales interview went. I wanna talk through it, why it was horrible, and how it helped me learn and make simple adjustments that made me much more successful in future interviews. So like to briefly set the stage, I was an engineer in undergrad, but I interviewed at a large company that started engineers in a customer facing role, but also gave them the option to go into sales longer term. So one of the uh, interviews on my full day interview on site was like an hour long sales interview with their team. And candidly, like, I didn't really brush up at all on sales. I knew a ton about their products. I had done a ton of research on what the program had to offer, but I had never really researched B2B sales. And so I get into this interview and there's a mock scenario where this person, I, you know, in my mind, I was preparing for all about the company, all this. I didn't do any research on what B2B tech sales was like. And there was this role play scenario where he was the owner of like a circus, a traveling circus, and they needed to transport 150 animals from New York to San Francisco for their next show. I was so caught off guard by this example because again, like in my mind, I like studied all about the company, um, but that wasn't what they were testing for. That I, I at least kind of like in the moment was able to think like, okay, well, you know, I clarified the number of animals and I asked like, do you have any animals that need to be transported in any certain way? Uh, but really after that, like those were the only questions that I asked and I started saying, you know, do you want to uh, drive them by uh, semi, uh, semi truck? Do you want to uh, have them go on trains? And I was literally fumbling like this, like I, I had no idea what to say. And I, again, it's because I wasn't prepared to handle like a B2B tech sales motion, which literally in this case, all I needed to do was ask more questions. Like, yes, you said you have 150 animals. Have you made a, a move like this before? Have you commuted this far across the country with all of these animals? And uh, assuming they said yes, like, hey, tell me a little bit more about that. Like what things went well? Um, what were lessons you learned with all of these different animals that you have in terms of the ways they may need to be transported, whether it's air, freight, et cetera. Like I literally just heard 150 animals need to move it New York to San Francisco. And I was like, hey, well, how do you wanna do it? Like we can do like airplane, we can do semi truck, uh, et cetera. And I could see the manager looking at me like, and thankfully, like, I kind of picked up on it on like the last 10 minutes to maybe save a little bit of face, but I definitely was not like the best sales candidate possible. Um, and I even actually found my interview critiques when I joined the company later. And there was a lot of critiques of like, doesn't really know what he's doing, doesn't have an active framework of, of selling. And like, granted I was nervous, but again, it's like, I didn't even understand that in like B2B tech sales, it's more about defining the problems, truly understanding the pains and all of the considerations on your prospects end before you even worry about trying to talk anywhere towards a solution. Now, I don't wanna to get too far away from the interview, but going back to that and going to your interviews as well, if you're in any type of role play, discovery call interviews, start with asking questions. And even as silly as it sounds, like using an example of a traveling circus is a great starting point. Like I could have asked one more about the types of animals that he had, two, were there any experiences in the past in terms of uh, moving all of these animals of such a great length across the entire country, etc.? Three, were there any preferred modes of travel that they've used in the past or that they were looking towards in this move? Four, uh, were there any budgetary constraints, whether it's fuel consumption or other things we need to be aware of when we're trying to get the best estimate of how to do this? Uh, five, I mean, the list goes on and on and on, like five accommodations for the animals, um, feeding things that we need to be prepared of, temperatures we need to store these animals in, water, et cetera, right? Like the list goes on and on. And I, I've seen this before in many different interviews, whether, you know, when candidates are getting into that discovery call phase, they feel a need to know the product and say, hey, here's all the great things we can do. And what they're trying to say subconsciously is like, hey, look at all this great research I did on your company. But the reality is, is that's not actually selling. Um, that, that is one part of it and it certainly helps. But unless you're able to have thoughtful and meaningful conversations, consultations with potential prospects, better understanding their world, what they're going through, and then and only then positioning your product, teaching them how if they wanted to solve those problems with your product, here's what it would look like. That is what is being tested for in a lot of these different sales interviews where you're doing role plays, discovery calls, et cetera. So in conclusion, if you've been struggling in your sales interviews with role plays, discovery calls, 
again, at a very minimum, uh, just start there. Start asking questions. Better understand their world before you even worry about positioning a potential solution. Even though it is important to understand the product, to show the potential interviewer that you've done some research on their company, etc. That is great, but it's not going to be the sole thing that gets you through uh, in terms of showing your business to business tech sales acumen. Two, I would just say there are a lot of great sellers out there. Everyone has had definitely one, and I would argue many of these types of moments, whether it's in an interview, with a customer, whatever it may be, conversations that just went horribly, and candidly, that's just part of it. Like if you are willing to stomach that, then you're probably cut out for tech sales. I would encourage you to keep going and obviously use those as learning moments. Don't just say, oh, we'll get it next time. Like deep dive into the pain and understand what went wrong. But hopefully that gives you better perspective for your own interviews and appreciate your time. We'll see you next week.